things he has done. Are you happy to be in worship on today? For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I know it's raining outside, but we're not going to have a dreary spirit on the organ or the bass on the cymbals and the choir on the deacon board. But we're going to have a joyful heart. Are you coming to bless the Lord on today? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I come to bless the Lord. Because when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, my soul gets excited and I thank God for praying, blessing me. Amen. We're here to acknowledge God for all he has done. We've gathered here today to worship. We know sometime in life when we see rain outside, people get scared of the weather. Amen. And so they say, I can't come to worship. But do you know when the raindrops are falling, that is the elements giving God praise when the snow outside when the leaf so everything knows what to do except people when the wind blow that's the sign of giving God praise when the rain falls but the Bible says let everything let everything let everything that has breath praise look some of y'all still ain't doing it amen that's what the Bible said. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So we're going to lift up the name of our God. We thank those who have joined us by way of Facebook, those who will watch us on the YouTube channel. We're grateful for your virtual presence. Those who dub us as your Facebook church, those who send us gifts, those who are convalescing. We dedicate this worship service to you. We pray something will be said through a prayer, a scripture reading, a song, the preach word that will lift up your weary soul or encourage you to continue to fight the good fight of faith. If you are, if you enjoy this worship, why don't you like, heart, comment, or share? Let somebody else know that you are in fellowship with New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana. Our deacons will come with the scripture and a prayer, and once they have read the scripture, you may take your seat. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I read to you the entire 100 Psalms May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, whether shall I go? Eternal God, our Father, we come this afternoon this morning, Father, we'll bow our heads, Father. Thank you, Father God, first of all, for the last night lying down. Every morning, right said, day we never saw before, and we never see this again right now, Father. We thank you, Father, for being clothed in our right mind, Father. What a portion of health and strength right now, Father. We thank you for the blood running warm in our veins, also, Father. Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, for being God all by yourself right now, Father. Because we realize that somebody laid down and didn't wake up this morning right now, Father. But we thank you right now, Father God, for opening our eyes to see this day, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, that the, the bed we slept in was not our cooling board right now, Father. We thank you that the four walls were not great this morning right now, Father God. But we thank you, Father God, for being God all by yourself and good, good up right now, Father God. That's your blessing right now, Father God, and each and every one that's on the sound of my weak voice right now, Father. That's your good one to stand by right now, Father God. We need you every minute and every hour. We can't do nothing without you, my Father. And you we live and you we die right now, Father. That's your blessing right now, Father God, and our new revelation church right now, Father God. Bless our church in the whole. Bless the membership one by one, name by name right now, Father God. It's the bless the top of the head to the sole of their feet right now, Father God. We know you're able to do all things right now, Father God, because you got all power 
Now, we're lifting your hand right now, Father God. We just thank you for your son that came and died and took our place on the cross right now, Father. Just shed the blood for us that we may live right now, Father God. We thank you right now for your son right now, Father. And to bless the ones right now, Father God, that's on the way to certain services right now, Father God. And bless every church that's on the door of worship service on a Sunday morning right now, Father. We just thank you for the rain this morning also right now, Father God. God, we need the rain because it was a drought right now, Father God. We thank you right now, Father. Bless you right now, Father God, to bless our pastor of the church. Reverend Turner right now, Father. Let you to pop up on everything inside. Build my ways to and down. Keep a head to run. Have mercy right now, Father God. Let you to crown his head with the wisdom not to lead the flock on home right now, Father God. Let you right now, Father God, to bless every church that opened the door for Sunday morning right now, Father God. Bless all the brethren inside the household of faith. But bless the ones that's outside the household of faith. Bless that man, that woman, that boy, good, that don't know you're the part of the sin right now, Father God. Because we all have sinned and fall short of your mercy and your grace right now, Father. But we thank you right now, Father God, for looking for you on our fault. You saw our needs this morning right now, Father. And we thank you right now, Father. Let your best our choir going to sing your Zion song this morning right now, Father. I know they want it right now, Father God. Let you the best musicians also that can play your music right now, Father God. Let you the golden stand by right now, Father God. Father God, you the best our little children also right now, Father God. Guide them right now, Father God. And where they should go right now, Father God. Let you look on the ones that have lost loved ones right now, Father God. Somebody heartbroken and somebody shedding tears right now. But you can make a broken heart and make things new again right now, Father God. Thank you right now, Father God. Open our eyes right now, Father God. But I don't stop our deaf ears. We need a word from you right now, Father God. Because your word soothed our soul right now, Father God. Your word put running our feet right now, Father God. We just thank you right now, Father God. Being so good and kind of right now, Father God. Let you look on the ones in the fun and this land right now, Father God. Somebody on the knees right now crying out to you right now, Father God. Hear the cry your little children because we're crying out to you right now, Father God. Because you was a God that answered our prayers right now, Father God. We just thank you right now, Father God, for that right now, Father. Let's see, Father God, to give us more love one for another. Because this is the meaning of evil where we live in right now, Father God. We need to love one another right now, Father God. This is our prayer in the Son, Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah, church. Come on and say hallelujah, church. I need you to respond with me with gladness. I need you to stand on your feet and praise the Lord. Because when you think of the goodness of the Lord, you should want to stand to your feet and praise. Praise is mandatory. It is not optional. When you think about all the things God has done for you, you should mandatory. You should have a praise that is mandatory. So come on and praise with us on this morning. How many know the Lord reigns? Come on and praise with me today. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Singing, Lord, you reign above every name. Say, my God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Say with power. With power and majesty. Dominion and authority. You reign. Yes, we do. We say with power. With power and majesty. Dominion and authority. You reign. Let's take it up, yo. Say, my God, pray. My God, pray. Our God, pray. Our God, pray. Sing it, Lord, you pray. Above every name. Yeah. Say, my God, pray. My God, pray. Our God, pray. Our God, pray. Sing it, Lord, you pray. Above every name. Say, with power. With power and majesty. Oh. Yes, you do. Say with power, with power and majesty, dominion of authority, you reign. Let's take it up, y'all. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Yes, just say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. 
thank you, Lord, to reign above every name. With power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, you do. I say with power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. It's the last time we call up. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. It's Lord to reign above every name. Yeah, just say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Sing it, Lord to reign above every name. Say, all of my circumstances. All of my He's giving him another chance. Give me another chance. Yes, you do. Say all of my circumstances. All of my circumstances. Give me another chance. Let's sing everybody again. Say all of my circumstances. All of my circumstances. Give me another chance. Say you right. I don't think you hear us because what the Lord has did to you. You need to know that all for your circumstances. He's giving you enough. You ain't. Yes, you do. Say all of my circumstances. Say you ain't. You ain't. Come on, you know what the Lord reigns. I need to sing with me. Say you ain't. You ain't. Come on, put your hands together in this house. Say you ain't. You ain't. Say you ain't. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't. Come on, let me hear the whole house sing to the Lord. Say you ain't. Say you ain't. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't. Oh, the Lord loves when the people come together to praise Him. Come on, let me say you ain't. You ain't. You ain't. On behalf of Pastor Turner and the New Revelation Church family, we welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. We hope something is said or done in the form of prayer, a song, or a preach word that would encourage you to come and visit with us again. Once again, you are welcome. Thank you. Good morning, New Revelation. Let's stand to our feet as we prepare to sing our congregational song. What a friend we have in Jesus. Praise 
first one was what afraid we How many of you know that sometimes we go through so many things because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer? Prayer helps you to focus on your problem solver and not your problem. Prayer says, I am weak, but you are strong. Prayer says, Lord, that I am centered and centering my life on your word and not my worries the bible says my house shall be called a house of what prayer if anything ought to go on it should be preaching it should be praise but it also should be prayer and so therefore as we prepare our hearts and mind the bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name i'll touching and agreeing i'll be one in the midst some people wonder why we come to the altar because we come touching and agreeing. There is power in agreement. We're agreeing that God can do what no other power can do. We're agreeing that miracles are possible. We agree that healing can take place in our mind, body, and soul. We agree that even if it don't happen the way we want it to happen, that we still trust God. So therefore, as we center our hearts and mind on the power of God, as we center our hearts and mind on what God is able to do, as they're playing that song, if you can sing a verse or two of it before we start our prayer. See, it's personal, and you have to sing it yourself. There's somebody that's weak and weary. We start at the top. Somebody lift your voice and say, I feel. I feel. Why don't you encourage yourself? Encourage yourself. No trial. On every hand, I 
our Father, our Father, we come to you as a child will go before their parent. We're coming to you, first of all, just to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done. And we can declare that if you never do anything else, truth be told, you already done enough. But because you're merciful, because you're gracious, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for the doors you're going to open. Thank you for the ways that you're going to make. Thank you for the healing in your, our bodies, oh God. Healing in our mind, healing in our souls. Thank you as we stand here, touching and agreeing, oh God. Father, there are some petitions here. Somebody is confused in their mind. Somebody is sick in their body. Somebody's family is in disarray. Father, somebody needs a job. Father, somebody needs to get their appetite back because sickness has taken away their appetite. Father, we just look to the hills from whence cometh our help because all of our help comes from you, oh God. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for, but thank you for the spirit of God that makes intercession of our groans and our moans. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that lead and guide us. Thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Thank you for Jesus who purchased our salvation and now we have a right to the tree of life. Father, we have gathered here in worship on today and we pray, Father, that something will continue to be said or done that will recharge our faith, that will renew our hope in you, O oh God. Something that said that will encourage us to keep going on because truth be told sometimes we get weary in our well doing but you said in your word be not weary in well doing for in due season we will reap if we faint not father whatever spirit of heaviness is upon us you told us you've given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and we ask right now that a praise will break forth in this place that will give you the glory oh god because we have a priority to praise your name when we look back over our lives when we think about where we could be when we think about how we should be but we thank you oh god that things are not as bad as they could be we thank you oh god for what did not happen oh god and so we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor right now and as we move forward in this worship oh god we pray the squeeze in the hand of our brother and sister will be an infusion of life oh god we'll let them know that they're not by themselves oh god that we're walking with them we're standing with them we're praying with them oh god and that we'll make it together let this service go high bless these singers bless these musicians that they will be a blessing to us and that you'll get the glory in Jesus name we pray amen why don't you hug your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know about you but I feel like going on look at your other neighbor and say I feel like though trials though trials though trials oh, oh, why don't you encourage somebody? Good to see you, Sister Mary Waiters. God bless you. I was going to call you. You would have missed this. I feel. Come on, say it one more time. No triumph, no triumph. That was twice. Can we just say it one more time for the Holy Ghost? 
Lift your hands if you bear witness and say, though trial, though trials may come on every hand, hallelujah. What are you determined to do? I feel I'm going. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand me for us. Don't wait on me to sing it. You say it. When we call on that great name, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Now, how many got the victory in New Revelation? We have Come on, clap those hands, all my victorious people in the house. And speaking of victory, we have a new song for you. Y'all knew it was a setup. Tell your neighbor, it's just chicken. It's just chicken. We got a new song for you. We want you to catch the words. Let me give you the words right quick and we're going to sing it. Somebody say, I have evidence. I have confidence. I'm a conqueror. And I tell them with some swag, say, guess what? And I know I win. How many got the victory? Well, I need you to clap your hands as we sing this song. Let's go, Eric. <laughs> Turn it around. Clap your hands, church. Let's go. Here we go, choir. I have evidence. I'm a conqueror. And I know I win. I know who I am. I know who I am. Come on, God wrote it in his plan. Point to yourself. Say, oh, oh. My name is Victory. Y'all can clap y'all hands. We're going to say it again. I have ever dancing. Hey, hey. I'm a conqueror. And I know who I win. I know who I am. God wrote it. Point to yourself. you to put those Z's in the air when you say victory. Oh, my name is Victory. Do that talk one more time. I want them to get the message. I have evidence. I'm a conqueror. And I know I win. I know who I am. Say, God wrote him in his plan. You got it now, New Revelation 4. Sing, oh, 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 oh. Bees in the air, y'all. Find it. Sing, oh, 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 oh. My name. My name Check this out. To conquer the enemy, he wrote in my that my name is. He 
that you have to speak over yourself. We ain't got that kind of time today, but there comes a time that you got to speak over yourself. We need to stop living in a defeated place. 
is this thing on? I said, we need to stop living in defeated places. Some of us are in defeated places in our mind, and that's the reason that we can't experience the glory and the power and the manifestation in our lives. Somebody prophesy over yourself and say, my name is Victory. I don't care what the devil dealt me this past week. My name is Victory. I don't care what I got to face or what's coming up. My name is Victory. This time tomorrow, I'll be in a surgery, but even in the midst of that surgery, I know that my name is Victory. I'm going to come out on the other side with my V's in the air victorious because victory, that's my name. Somebody shout your name. Shout your name out and then say, my name is victory. No matter what the devil says, no matter what the devil does, my name is still victory. Y'all had church last week. I get it. You don't want to have it today. I get it. We had it last week. We had church last week. I get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're going on to the next song. But just say this. Tell me who can stand before us. It's still chicken, y'all. When we call on that great name. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Precious. Now put those same V's in the air. We have the V. Victory is mine. Put the V's in the air. Victory is mine. It's still chicken. Victory today is mine. For I told Satan, get thee behind. Somebody shout. Victory today is mine. Oh, oh, oh. His name is. We out here, we have. Come on, if you got the victory for real, clap those hands. Come on, Ty. Can we go back in the crates and grab one that has been a blessing to us down through the years? Can we go back and grab something from way back? Let's see if you remember it. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in a meadow's grass, and then he leads me beside the quiet stream. My failing health, and he lets me do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. Lift your hands and say, that's why I'm safe. 
I was sitting, sitting there listening to the words of that song, safe in his arms. You know, Deacon Alexander have a daughter, and a daughter to a father, like all their children mean a lot. But sometimes the daddy can be partial to the daughter. And I remember when my daughter was small, and I would take her and I would put her in my arms and 
when I would put my daughter in my arms, you could see this calm came over her. I said, what's wrong with daddy's baby? Who bothering daddy's baby? Nobody. But one thing I learned, Tanya, is that she, she, she would snuggle up and settle in my arms because she knew Brother Roosevelt Glenn that she was safe in her daddy's arms. And as long as she was in her father's arms, that she didn't have to worry about anything. Is there any time in your life where you just snuggle up when you think about your father, which is in heaven? You block everything else out. Nothing else matters. But I'm just safe in his arms. Has the Lord ever had to hold you? Hold you with his word. Hold you from the fears of life. Hold you from the cares of life. And say to your neighbor, I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. Everybody can't understand that. But it's all right. Just do what Big Mama said. Keep on living. And one day you're going to have to get up in those arms. And you're going to have to be there because there's nowhere else to turn. Nowhere else to go, but I'm safe. Give this thing an aggregation a hand. Thank you all for your passion. Thank you for your preparation as you stand before God and these people to lift your voices in adoration to our God. How many enjoy coming to worship? Do you really enjoy coming to worship? Do you really enjoy coming to the fellowship? How many of you get encouragement from coming to the fellowship? How many like the people you sit next to? Sometimes we become so uh, complacent and we because we do it week after week, we go through the same liturgy or the same order of worship, if you will. And for some of us, it's just become a habit of doing. But you ought to come every week expecting to receive something. Even though it's the same order of worship, you ought to come expecting for God to speak to you. Speak to my heart. Give me a little bit of that, Adrian. Because I think we need to prepare our minds for the word. Lord, speak to my heart. Give me your holy word. Lord, if I don't hear from you, I don't know what to do. The choir, y'all know that? Have y'all gone? Just get a verse of that if you don't mind. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring words on the wings of the more the dark, the dark nights will fade away if you speak to my heart speak to my heart holy spirit message of love says to encourage me lifting my lifting my heart from despair how you love me and cared for me. Oh, just speak to my heart. Now say, speak to my, speak to my heart. Come on. Yeah. Speak to my heart. 
why don't we just make a whole choir? Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. That's it. Let's all sing together. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to me. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Heart, Lord, give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Lord. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people to declare the mysteries of God. We pray for clarity of speech. Pray for open hearts to receive this your word. Father, we're not preaching for any glory, but so the devil may be horrified and the people of God edified. And we thank you that your word will accomplish everything that it has set out to accomplish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You'll find on the screen or you can turn in your Bible to the first chapter of Joshua. This is what we call NFL Sunday. Now, the Lord gave me this idea some years ago and it's just good to have the manic days. And I said, Lord, what does NFL have to do with church? And he said, the National Faith League. And what you will do is you will draw comparisons with the NFL and faith. That's what preaching is about, application. See, when you give a parable, a parable is an earthly experience that gives you divine direction. And you have to put things where people can understand it in order for them to be able to move and follow the instructions of God. Jesus often taught in parables. And so therefore, when we preach and I preach, I'll talk about me. I try to draw upon everyday experiences with a divine directive so we can move at the command of God. And this is the same on today as we are people of the National Faith League. Those who are believers, we believe by faith. Because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when we believe God's word, y'all roll with me, I'm preaching already. When you believe God's word, that makes you a faith walker. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word of God and not by what I see. And so as we are here at this NFL Sunday and the Lord has placed upon my heart from the chapter one of Joshua for your consideration, verse seven and eight, it reads like this from the Christian Sand standard version of the Bible. Above all, 
be strong and very courageous to carefully observe the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to recite it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then, somebody say then, then. you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. And I want to share from this thought, the power of the playbook. The power of the playbook. As we have been studying and sharing, and we're now back in Bible study, we've been reading a book to assist us in our understanding of the enemy. Because you need to understand in football, you have two teams that are competing against each other. And as individuals, we need to understand that we are in a competition. You are in a fight against the enemy. Let me put it in plain terms, the devil. You are fighting against the spirit of the enemy, the devil. The Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible says your adversary is crouching around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to kill your desires. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to put you in a position where you can't move. Amen, somebody. And so he tries to do this through confusion. Y'all roll with me. Amen. The enemy always uses confusion, misunderstanding in order to get you off track. Y'all don't want to talk to you. Remember Eve in the garden. Eve understood the word of God. She had gotten it from her husband. She had been told what to do and what not to do. But the enemy came. And he tried to bring confusion, watch this division in the house by speaking to the weaker vessel. I, I didn't mean to go here, but the enemy always goes to the weaker vessel because he wants to manipulate the mind. And I'm not any way, watch this, insinuating that the woman is the weaker vessel. I'm not insinuating at all because you have more women that are strong in Christ than men nowadays. Amen, somebody. But he goes to the weaker vessel, whoever it is, to try to cause confusion. And he calls her to be confused by trying to manipulate her, manipulate her by asking her the questions. Go home and read it. You'll see. The enemy always wants to start confusion. He don't watch this, want to see the people of God united. Y'all roll with me. Amen. He wants there to be infighting among the people of God. Because what he does is he tried to put us in a position where we are made to believe what we think is right. Oh, I wish somebody understand. Based upon our experiences, based upon our culture, based upon what we think we know, he make us believe what we have done is right. But how many of you know that the Bible says, the word said, there is a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof, y'all didn't read the Bible, is destruction. Amen, somebody. I, I was having a conversation with somebody. I, I know I always tell the truth, but y'all, I like to shock some of y'all. But uh, I was having a conversation, Brother Charles, with somebody that was trying to tell me that Tito's vodka is not gluten free. I said, yes, it is. They were trying to tell me it's not gluten free. Amen. It doesn't have any sugar. I said, no, it does not. And then they had to Google it. And they said, you were right. She said, the reason I thought, watch this. I thought that was true because all alcohol has sugar. 
I said, that's not true. She had looked it up and said, it's not true. I know it's going to shock y'all and get quiet. The point I'm making is that she was going off of what she thought, not what she knew. I wish somebody in the house understand. And a lot of times when we deal with people, we go off what we think and not what we know. Amen, somebody. There is a way. And I said, why did she say, oh, I just thought. And so we got to be very careful in life to go off of a thought because there is a way that seems right to a person. But the end thereof is the suck destruction. They said yesterday, we need to stop assuming. Because when you assume, you know what it does. And so what the enemy does, watch this, he makes our experience be the truth. It's not the truth. It's a truth. I wish somebody understand. And that's why when Jesus says, I am the what way, not a way, but the way, the definite article, because some people, Jesus think Jesus is a way. But he is the way, the truth, and the life. Watch this. And the Spirit of God directs us in the way of Christ. Oh, y'all rolling with me. Amen. And what I mean by that, when you want to go your own way, and you have the Word of God in your heart, and you want to do things your own way, even when you think you are right. Is there anybody in the house that's been uh, 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 rerouted like me? Amen. I wish somebody understand. Have you ever had your GPS on and you went the wrong way and you tried to go your own way or you turned the own way and the GPS said rerouting? Isn't that just like the Holy Spirit when you want to do things your own way, when you people didn't hurt you, people didn't did whatever, people didn't lie on you or whatever, you want to do things, you try to start plotting in your mind and you make it up how I'm going to do it, but won't the Holy Spirit reroute you? It will teach you in the word. You don't have to try to get back at people. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. If I want to, I will repay. Because maybe it's just a misunderstanding. Amen, somebody. So the spirit of God directs us in the way of Christ. And he will reroute you. Because the people of God ought to be on one accord we ought not let the enemy come in and create division and confusion among us amen we can all disagree but we don't have to be disagreeable because we all understand the big picture because we all on the same team amen look at your neighbor say neighbor are you on my team look at your other neighbor say other neighbor are we on the same team? Now put your hands together if you know you're on the same team. Football is a team sport. Y'all roll it with me. It's a team sport. Everyone that's on the field has to rely on one another. Everyone on the team has a part to play. Everybody on the team. If the guard don't pull, then guess what? The running back can't get through the hole. He has no blocker. Amen, somebody. If the right receiver don't run his route, the quarterback going to miss the pass. Come on, Bears. Y'all do the good today. Amen. Y'all on right now. Amen. If, 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 if the tight end is not blocking, then the defense can come around. And get a sack. The only thing I'm trying to say is. Everyone on the team has a position to play. Everyone in the church has a position to play. Amen somebody. Each one of us. God has given each and every one of us. A skill and a talent. To function in the ministry. You may not be on the starting lineup. Oh I wish somebody understand this. You may not be on the, but you're at least you're on the bench. And so when it's time for you to get in the game, you ought to know how to play your position. I wish somebody understand, Bill. Because sometimes there are people that get hurt. And it's the next man up. Sometimes people are sick and it's the next man up. And the question I'm trying to ask you, are you prepared to play your position? 
Even when you're not on the starting lineup, you still have to practice. Oh, I wish I had some people in the house. You still have to look at the film. You still have to know the playbook. Because the playbook unites everybody. The playbook teaches everyone their position on the field. I wish somebody understand. The playbook is the common denominator to the defense, to the offense, to special teams. It is the playbook that unites everyone. And the Bible is the playbook for believers. The Bible is what unites us. But it seems like the Bible is what has divided us. It's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Amen, somebody. And so therefore on today, I, I hope I can convince you for our corporate worship and for your individual lives to learn how to lean on the playbook because there's power in the playbook. The playbook, you all, as I stated, is a detailed plan of action. In football, they, they, before they come to training camp, what they do is they give the players the playbook to go home and study it. Before they start on the field, you have to have the playbook. That's why as a child of God, you cannot be on the field if you don't know the playbook. If you don't know the playbook, Brother Charles, when you come to camp, then you're going to be sitting on the sidelines. You're not going to get in the game. And guess what? You might even get cut from the team. Because ultimately, Dr. Jonay, you have to learn the playbook. I hope y'all getting it. I'm all, I could be through right here. Amen. If you don't know the playbook, listen, you can't get on the field. Because you got to know the playbook. It's a detailed plan of action that unites and unifies everyone. And everyone understands how their position and how the play interconnects them. The Bible teaches us in Corinthians, you all, there are many members, but one body. Just think about your natural body. Everything serves a function on your natural body. Just stump your baby toe. You'll find out how important it is. Amen. Because that pain will shoot up your leg to your brain. Amen. All of us, your hands. This is one body. Think about it. Your hands, the functionality of your body, even the hairs in your nose, your eyelashes, they all play a part. God, watch this, intricately designed this human body. And think about the internal organs, how they all work together. Amen. And if that's not enough for you, think about how the Lord allows another life to grow inside of life and that life will produce life. Isn't that some kind of wonderful? What a mighty God we serve. So we understand how the body works together. So we are the body of Christ. Amen. Somebody. And all of us have to know the playbook. We don't need to know the other books. We need to know the playbook. The playbook puts all of us on one accord. The playbook ensures at least three things. When we look at what's happening here in the life of Israel, Israel was about to go into the promised land. This was another generation. In the book of Deuteronomy, those in Sunday school, y'all forgot already. Amen. We went through the Deuteronomy. Amen. Deuteronomy was a second law, a, sec a reiteration of what they had already been told. But it was the new generation of Israelites that was moving into the promised land. And the Lord wanted them to understand that if you're going to be successful because the last group, they messed up because they did not consult the playbook. 
they allow the fear of their enemy to cause them to miss out on the chance of a lifetime. They had forgot what the word of God said. I'm going to take you through the wilderness and I'm going to plant you in the promised land. But because they could not see past their enemy. And guess who the enemy was? Themselves. That's right, Deacon. They was themselves. Because when they went and spied out the land, go home and read Numbers, the 14th chapter. When they went and spied out the land, Ed, what happened was they came back with a good report. Y'all listen to me. Now, they were going to get be given the land. They came back, said, yes, this land is good. Here's some of the evidence of it. It said, but there are giants there. Y'all roll with me for a little bit. There are giants there. And we look like grasshoppers in their sight. They allowed a challenge. Somebody needs to write this down. Don't let a challenge cause you to miss out on a chance of a lifetime. Because they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Nobody called them grasshoppers, but themselves. So the question is, the enemy is always causing us to doubt who we are. And you can't see yourself how you think other people see you. That's a word right there. Too many of us put on our clothes. What are the people going to think if I put this on? How do you like it? How do you like the way you wear your hat? How do you like the smell of the perfume or the cologne? How do you like it? Stop being so concerned about what everybody else or what you think everybody else is thinking. How do you see yourself? The enemy calls confusion. Listen to this. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. The enemy calls confusion in their own mind. But look at Caleb and Joshua. It was only two that said, remember what the word of the Lord said. He's going to give us the land. And they said, no. They were fearful. And so because they saw the challenge, they missed out on the chance. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And how many of us saw the challenge? And we missed out on the chance. And sometimes you only get one magic moment. I remember last night, Deacon Alexander, I was watching uh, my nephew, their power four school. Y'all may not know what all these things, some of y'all. They're a power four football team. That means they don't get all the bigger athletes like Alabama, like Georgia, but they still get premium athletes. And for the last two weeks, Bowling Green State University is still a power four, a great school. They, they last week they played Penn State and last week they only lost by seven points. I know some people will look at that as they lost, but actually it's a win because to play a Big Ten school with over 100,000 folks in the stands and to only lose by seven points when they thought they were going to be blowed out. That's a win for that team. Watch this. So they didn't allow the challenge to cause them to miss out on the chance. So this week, they played another power five school. They played Texas A&M. They had to go way down the college station, Bryan, Texas, with over 100,000 people in the stands. And I said, I'm going to watch this game. I, I can't lie. I just said, I know they're going to get blown out. But I want to see DG on the field. But when I turned to the game, they were only down by three points in the third quarter. I said, Lord, have mercy. Again, this small school was not afraid to face the giant. Oh, I wish somebody understand. And, and because of the mistakes they made, guess what, Dick and Danny? They still end up only losing by six points. Y'all missing what I'm saying. Amen. But because the challenge was great to them, they didn't allow the chance, amen, to get away from them. They learned how to take on a challenge. And is there anybody in the house that ever had to learn to take on a challenge? The doctor had diagnosed you 
with a disease, amen. The doctor had diagnosed you with prostate cancer, breast cancer, amen. But you looked at the cancer in the face and said, I'm not going to allow the challenge to cause me to miss out on the chance of a lifetime. The man may have left you. The job may have laid you off. I wish somebody can look back over your life. You had knee replacement. You had hip surgery. You had some challenge in front of you. But you said, I'm going to go through my therapy and I'm going to walk again. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. And I'm going to be wiser. I'm not going to allow the challenge to cause me to miss out on the chance. So what he's doing in Deuteronomy, he's reiterating to them, don't be like the last generation. He said, but I want you to be confident in the playbook. Amen. I want you to have faith in what the Lord has said. I'm getting happy now. I want you to think about what the word of God said. The Bible said the grass wither, the flower faded, but the word of God stands forever. The Bible said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Is there anybody that's convinced about the word? I wish I had some people that really had to walk by faith and not by sight. You really didn't know how things were going to work out, but I trusted in the Lord with all my heart. I didn't lead to my own understanding, but in all my ways, I acknowledged him and he directed my path. I didn't know how the marriage was going to work when my husband cheated on me, when my wife cheated on me, when they walked away, but somehow or another, the Lord made a way somehow I did not think I was going to recover from the damaging things I've done but is there anybody in the house know that I went some wrong ways I made some wrong turns but I'm so glad that God repositioned me Oh, Lord, I wish I had somebody in the house. Anybody ever been repositioned? I'm getting happy because I'm thinking about my life. I'm thinking about some situations I've been in. I'm thinking about how I wanted to give up. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I wasn't making the right decision. But, Minister Sean, I kept on trusting in the Lord. And I can testify to you that the Lord will never steal you wrong. Because the Bible says, Sister Susie Wilson, the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord he says so trust me trust me don't be like them trust me oh that's a word for somebody trust me I know it look bad right now but if you will only trust me and so as he gives them those directions in Deuteronomy amen then it's now here at the book of Joshua this book of conquest as he tells him now in the first verse, I'm almost done. Moses, my servant is dead. That coach is gone. I need you know the pastor is nothing but like a coach. He tries to encourage people to walk in the ways of the playbook. Oh, I wish somebody understand. He tried to teach people to walk in the ways of the play. But guess what? I don't want anyone under my pastorate, under my leadership to not succeed. I want everybody to be successful. Amen. But it's not predicated on my desire. It's predicated on your ability to follow the playbook. All my responsibility is, is to teach and preach the playbook. The playbook puts all of us on one accord. He said, Moses is dead. I know people are mourning. I know you're mourning, Joshua. He said, but you got to go over this Jordan River. You got to lead these people. I know you're mourning because Moses is gone. But he said, I still got plans for those that are alive. Oh, somebody just missed that. Right? There may be some people in situations that have died out of your life. But guess what? You didn't die. Oh, I wish I got some happy people in there. You didn't die. I know it left. I know you don't have it no more. Amen. But you are still alive and God still has plans for your life. He said, but Joshua. Now, I need you to understand this as the leader. The one thing you cannot do right there in verse seven. Thank you, Sister Jackson, for what you said this morning. Thank you for that encouragement. All of us need encouraging. 
He says in verse 7, above all, y'all go home and read the rest. Be strong. Somebody need to hear this. And courageous. The last group, were, they were not courageous. They were cowards. And I remember, thank you, Holy Spirit, he's just talking, y'all. I grew up listening to the Jackson Southerners, my mom and big mama now. Anybody remember that Malico tape? The Jackson Southerners, Adrian was on there. And they sang that song, God don't want, he don't need no coward soldiers. I know y'all too young for that, amen. God don't want, he don't need no coward soldiers. He said, the last group were cowards, but I need you to be strong and courageous. Not only strong and courageous, but carefully observe the whole instruction. My servant Moses commanded you. I don't have this as a, a point on the screen, but you all need to learn how to listen to leadership. Write that down. Amen. You have to learn how to listen. Look at what he's telling him. Above all, listen to the Holy Spirit. Moses, my servant, commanded you. That's first. Do not turn from the left or the right so that you may have success wherever you go. You have to learn how to listen to leadership. I don't mind saying this. Brenda don't mind me telling it. I remember years ago, Brenda was my member and we were traveling to convention years ago 2007 Brenda was talking to me about some stuff she said it and Brenda said pastor I got everything going right for me things are well she said but the only thing I ain't got is a man she was telling the truth she said seem like relationships are going awry they won't help this and yada 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 I said Brenda Brenda had become very 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 active in church I said the Lord can't bless you with any kind of man I said, where you're going in your life, I said, you have to be, have the right person. I said, you're growing in God. And I said, if you get the wrong person, they will come if you're not careful and distract you from where the Lord is taking you. I said, so the Lord has to prepare. And I was a young pastor and the Lord was telling Mr. Say to her, I said, the Lord has to prepare the right person for you. I said, so you stay faithful and the Lord will send you who you need. And about three years later, she said, Pastor, this man keep putting flowers on my desk. I said, okay, Ann, he's too old. He's older than me. I said, you don't know how your blessing going to come. And guess what? They still married to today. Give God a hand clap of prayer. You got to learn. And I'm not saying the Lord speaks through the leader. I'm just a vessel. When he puts me over people, he has something for me to say. You have to learn to listen to leadership. He said, listen to the leader. He said, then after you listen to the leader, he said, this book of instruction must not do what? Depart from your mouth. It says, meditate. What the idea in the Hebrew meditate means, speak it to yourself. Remember the Bible says in Psalms 1, I'm almost done, y'all. It said that meditate on the word day and night. Then you will be like a what? Tree planted by the water. The, the, the idea of meditation means you speak it to yourself. You speak it until it becomes a part of who you are. Anybody has any daily affirmations? An affirmation I never forgot, and y'all heard me say it before, from a child at Ivanhoe Elementary School. Our teacher told us to say this, I am somebody. I see greatness. Anybody ever had to say that? See, that's an affirmation. Yesterday, we, were, they, we did an exercise where we had to affirm people. We had to put things in a bag to affirm people. Beautiful wasn't Dr. Jonay. We encourage people. All of us need affirmation. And he's saying and to ourselves, recite the word. I am the righteousness of God. I am an ambassador for Christ. Amen. Somebody. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light 
of the I wish somebody am. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am not a sinner saved by grace. I am saved. I don't have to put a sinner on there. But is there anybody know? I am the righteousness of God. You got to speak the word to yourself. I am what God says. He told me to be strong. Reverend, he told me to be courageous. There was time I had to face giants. And I had to draw upon the word of God. I said, Lord, you said in your word to be strong. You told me to be courageous. That doesn't mean that it's the absence of fear. But it means I still step up to the plate. When fear is trying to confuse me. He said this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall recite it day and night, so you may be careful to observe everything in it. How many of you know you can't believe half of the word? You gotta believe all of the word. There are blessings and there are curses. It said if you do this, then you shall prosper and succeed in everything that you do. If you really Believe the playbook. The playbook ensures three things. The first one that ensures is it gives all of us consistency. Somebody say consistency. Consistency is the key. Consistency says that we are all on one accord. Consistency says that we agree not with each other. But I agree with God. I agree with his word. And is there anybody in the house know that all the time I don't like what his word says. I don't like what the word says. What it says, pray for them that despitefully misuse you. I don't like when the word says when they ask you to go one mile, you go two. I don't like when the word says if they smite you on one cheek. Turn the other cheek. I might not like it, but I have to agree with it. I might not like the play that the coach is calling, but I learned that I had to agree with it. I told y'all a little earlier, there are some times that I want to go my own way, but the Holy Ghost, he reroutes me, he redirects me, all because I have the playbook in my heart. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against God. Is there anybody here that's made it up in your mind that I don't want to sin against God? Because if I don't follow the playbook, he will sit me on the bench and I may never get an opportunity again to get in the game. So I have to learn how to be consistent and the playbook puts us all on the same page not only does it ensure consistency but it ensures efficiency is there anybody here know that the playbook it ensures efficiency efficiency is performing or functioning in the best possible best possible manner and is there anybody that here that knows there are some times I know my way is not right and I want to do it my way but I'm so glad that the playbook it ensures that I am performing at the best possible level that I can. Is there anybody in the house? You lived a wild and wretched life, but one day you opened the playbook and the playbook tamed your life. You're not as wild as you used to be. You're not 
as loose uh, uh, as you used to be uh, uh, cause the playbook uh, uh, it ensures uh, uh, that you're functioning uh, uh, in the best possible manner uh, uh, say yes uh, uh, I'm not wasting uh, uh, no time or effort uh, uh, the playbook uh, uh, puts a position uh, uh, puts a person uh, uh, in a position uh, uh, to operate uh, uh, at the highest level uh, uh, through preparation uh, uh, through training uh, uh, through hard work uh, uh, through dedication uh, uh, through consistency uh, uh, in the word uh, uh, the word will uh, uh, transform you uh, uh, the word will uh, uh, tame you uh, uh, say yes uh, uh, is there anybody here uh, uh, I know y'all can't get excited because uh, you're still living uh, uh, your wild life uh, uh, you're still living uh, uh, your riotous life uh, uh, but at least I have uh, uh, five people uh, uh, that remember uh, uh, how you used to be uh, uh, but I can testify uh, uh, I'm so glad uh, uh, that I'm not like uh, uh, I used to be uh, uh, thank God alright uh, uh, say yes uh, uh, I was wild uh, uh, but now uh, uh, the word uh, uh, allows me uh, uh, to operate uh, uh, with efficiency uh, uh, it operates uh, uh, with consistency uh, uh, and the last one is uh, uh, it allows me uh, uh, to be a quality person uh, uh, ain't God alright uh, uh, the bible said uh, uh, that if you keep yourself uh, uh, in the word uh, uh, when you get on the other side uh, uh, you shall have uh, uh, good success uh, uh, and you shall prosper uh, ain't God alright uh, uh, the reason uh, uh, I'm quality uh, uh, is because uh, uh, I have uh, uh, a good uh, uh, high social position uh, uh, people see me now uh, uh, they talk about uh, uh, I remember when uh, uh, you used to do this uh, uh, I remember when uh, uh, we used to do that uh, uh, but I'm so glad uh, uh, my testimony is uh, uh, that that's what I used to do uh, uh, that's what I used to be uh, uh, but look at your neighbor, say neighbor, look at me now, ain't God all right, yeah, I'm so glad that I have a good high social position, the Bible said, let me see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven, the reason I am great, Cause great is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Is there anybody here know that you're glad that I got the Holy Ghost? I'm so glad that I'm better than I used to be. I'm better than I was and I will be better than I am right now. All because I got the playbook. All because I hear the word in my heart. I walk by faith and not by sight. Say yeah. Oh, is there anybody glad? I got a word. The word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. If it wasn't for the word, I might be out of my mind. But I'm so glad that I had a word to keep my mind. Is there anybody here that ever felt like giving up? But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that the word kept me when I want to give up. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. The power of the playbook. If you haven't tried the playbook, why don't you try opening it, reading your word, coming to Bible study. Bible study in Sunday Bible Institute is the place where you learn the playbook. Every football player has to go and watch film and even before they start playing in the season, 
they would have team meetings and they would go over the playbook. You all, Bible study in Sunday school is the place where we learn the playbook. Pick it up yourself. And when you have questions, bring them to Bible study in Sunday school. And that's why I don't get so frustrated when people can't signify and testify because you have not learned the playbook. And some of us, we're still on the bench in life. We're still depressed. We're still on the struggle bus, spiritually and mentally, because we have not learned the power of the playbook. Put your hands together. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you have afforded us to be reminded that you've given us a playbook that will guide us in this life, guide us as an individual, guide us as a corporate body of believers. Thank you for not leaving us with instructions. Help us, oh God. The Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Thank you for your word. And we pray that the people that say they are believers will have a desire, a stronger desire for the word of God. Father, we pray if something that something was said to encourage somebody to want to be a part of the National Faith League. Father, because one day you're coming back for your church without a spot or wrinkle. And we pray right now, God, that they make this choice. When their doors are extended, we pray somebody will make this decision. We thank you in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Thank God for those who tuned in by way of Facebook, those who dub us as your Facebook church, those who watch us on our YouTube channel. We hope something was said to inspire you, to inform you, and also to challenge you to open the playbook. The playbook is your source and your direction. If you want to be a member of this church, contact us. You will see our phone number come up. You can email us. Thank you for those who send your gifts to this church. You believe in sowing into this ministry. And those who desire to send a gift, you will see the ways in which you can give online. We're praying for all those that are sick. Sister Bryant, we're praying for you. We're praying for you, Sister Harrison, the Brodens. Thank God for you and all of those who are on the sick list. Sister Laws, we're praying for you, all those who our convalescing, all the caregivers, we want you to know that we have you on our heart and you are in, in our mind. God bless you. And remember, don't let the day make the difference in you. You make the difference in the day. Let's put our hands together. There may be somebody in this house on today. Good afternoon in Revelation. I am Damian Lee and happy fourth Sunday of September. Here is your NRNBC News for the week. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and in the honor of this special month, the Progressive Circle is having a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You can purchase a date on the calendar, which is displayed in the vestibule and donate the corresponding amount or the date that you choose. You can give by check, giftify or cash. Please note the amount you're giving for the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. If giving via check, please make the check payable to New Revelation. And in the memo section, please mark it St. Jude. If you have any questions or would want to give a donation, please see Tiara Hicks, Taisha Gardner, or Keisha Cody. Thank you for your support, the Progressive Circle. The Lehman Ministry, in partnership with the Veterans of Foreign War post-2151, is sponsoring an essay contest for Patriots Pen for grades 6 through 8. The theme is My Voice in America's Democracy and Voice of Democracy for grades 9 through 12. And the theme is, Is America Today Our Forefathers' Vision? There are also entry forms for, children, for Citizenship Education Teachers Award all current certified and or licensed teachers for grades K through 12 are eligible to apply. The youth ministry will have applications for everyone interested. The deadline is October 31st, 2024 for all forms to be submitted. Thank you, the layman ministry. The male chorus will have rehearsal on Tuesday, September 24th at 6 p.m. All men are invited to attend. 
New Revelation. We're celebrating our 70th Jubilee Church anniversary in October. The dates are Sunday, October 20th, Wednesday, October 23rd, Thursday, October 24th, and Sunday, October 27th. We will have a banquet to celebrate this Jubilee milestone on October 25th. The love gift is $140. At this time, we would like to recognize those members who are celebrating our birthday this week. The New Revelation Church family would like to wish a happy birthday to Terry Elam, Betty Moody, Reverend Dwight Pointer, Douglas Lilly, and Anthony Davis. May you all have a wonderful time celebrating on your very special day. Please note that Bible study is on Tuesday at 11 a.m. and on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Please come out and join us. New Revelation, let us continue to pray and offer our support for the sick, the shut-in, their caregivers, the youth, the bereaved, and those in prison. Well, this concludes the NRNBC News for the week. If you're watching and would like to come contact or visit New Revelation, we're located at 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana. The phone number is 219-949-2225. We would love to have you join us on Sundays. Our sister Irene Mitchell Bible Institute starts at 9.30 a.m. and worship service starts at 11 a.m. May you all have a wonderful and safe week. And remember, don't let the day make a difference to you, but you make the difference in the day. I'm Damian Lee, and I'll see you soon.